So my name is Matt Elliott. I am the team owner of Matt Elliott Home Selling Team, uh, a real estate um, team here in Leesburg. We are with Real Brokers, and I've got a team of agents who help clients buy and sell property. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about your story and where you got started and how did it lead you up to this point? So, um, so I went to school at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, and my, I had a goal, of course, of finding a job right out of college, and I got my real estate license in, in college oh, wow. as, a, yeah, as a fallback. I didn't want to be unemployed. I didn't want to graduate college and be unemployed, and so my, my fallback was I could help clients buy and sell homes in case I couldn't find a real job, so to speak. And so, but graduating college, I did find that real job, and I sold um, telecommunications and software for about seven years. And then, then the dot-com implosion happened in 2001, and I decided at that point um, to go back and get my license and, and, and sell real estate full-time, and so I've been doing that ever since, uh, since 2002, so the past 24 years. Okay, yeah. and what uh, drew you to that? Like when you were in school, ah. what did you say? Like where you're like, you know what, real estate because dot dot dot. What what happened? Or like, why did you go that direction? Did you know that was always something you wanted to do? Not really, not not really at all. Um, my dad was an entrepreneur, and he was an auctioneer in, in uh, uh, Western Pennsylvania where I grew up, and he was always. You know, helping his clients and customers, and, and I, you know, aspired to do that. But I really had no aspirations to become a real estate agent in college. It was really more of a fallback. And then, um, like, candidly speaking, it was when again that dot com implosion happened. Um, companies were shutting down left and right. I knew I had to do something to support yeah. my family, and so real estate was uh, something I figured I could get into and work really hard and uh, and do okay with. And so that's what I did. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's funny how that works sometimes, right? You don't really know like where you're going to go, but you're like, let's just do it. And then yeah. you figure it out. I, that's just the way it goes sometimes. And, and right. you know, I had a supportive spouse who helped me. Um, I did not have kids at the time. And so it was a, it was a fairly easy transition. I didn't have you know, a big family to support, but I had bills to pay. And so I had to do something yeah. and um, got back into, got back into real estate in 2002. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. And now what has been one of your favorite moments when it comes to helping your clients when they're finding a new home or looking to relocate? Yes, and so uh, favorite moment. Um, so the, the best part about my business is the rela are, are the relationships that I built. That's by far my favorite part of what I do. And in terms of um, my, my favorite part of uh, I'm sorry, a, a good moment you said, or you know, any, any particular clients. Um, I'm not sure if this is what you asked. But no, but anything that stands out to you that you're just like, you know what, I really love this. Like, I love this part of my industry that I work in, helping people. That's it, really, helping, helping clients. Um, when, you know, when you are submitting offers for clients right now in this market, that's a tough, it's a tough buyer's market right now. Mm -hmm. And so buyers are struggling to find homes. When you find a home, they've got 15 contracts, and it, it can be challenging and stressful for buyers. Um, but when you find that home for a buyer, and then you negotiate, and you have a successful offer process where you get your client that property, that's a big win. And, and what a lot of uh, consumers do not understand, for the good agents that are, that are out there, the good realtors that are out there, we stress about this probably more so than our clients do. We really do. Um, it keeps us up at night, and we worry about you know getting the best deal for our clients, the best um, the best home and the best terms. When we lose out, it's it's heartbreaking for us as a, as, as and I say us, meaning other good agents that are out there, so other good realtors. And yeah. so um, that is uh, again heartbreaking. And so when you help a client find that home and get that home under contract, um, that's just a big win. And, and on, the, on the flip side of the coin, when you're working with sellers. And you help them negotiate a really good uh, sale mm -hmm. on the home that they're selling. That's just such a big win. It, it goes far beyond the commissions. For everybody. Oh, for everybody. Oh, for, absolutely. So it's not, it's not different for one client versus the next in terms of that feeling that we get. We, we have the same, I have the same feeling um, for every client that I work with. Uh, I keep saying we and I, and people are going to wonder whether or not I have multiple personalities. <laughs> no, no, I get what you're saying. That's not, that's really not the case. 
Yeah. No, I get it. Mm -hmm. And then um, tell me a little bit about how you met Aaliyah. Like, how did that ah. come to be? So I'm trying to think back on how Aaliyah and I met. Um, I think I saw her do some work for a peer, another real estate agent. And I came in and um, I, what, what originally was uh, was a photo shoot. That's what it was. Yeah. And she, they did a great job, you know, with my own headshot and photo shoot. And she asked, what are you doing with video? And, and really nothing was the answer. <laughs> and uh, she, in fact, helped me with a project that I did here um, with Loud and Dad. And it's a project that I'm, I'm no longer involved with at the, at the time, but it had to do with um, shooting some content around different things you can do with your family. Yes. So at the time, my kids were, were younger, and we would have my family and my kids, and we would go to different spots here in Loudoun County, whether it's the ice rink in Ashburn or you know ice cream shop here, Grudos in Leesburg, yeah. or wherever it may be. And we had a lot of fun with it, but my, my goal for that project was to try to inspire dads specifically, but all parents, to spend time with their kids Aww. and just trying to give content and ideas on what to do. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been through a divorce and one of the things that I try to be super intentional and focused on is spending time with my kids and, and, and focused uninterrupted time. And there were times where I struggled finding different ideas and things to do with them. Again, this is when they were you know, three years old and six years old. Um, and so that was my inspiration behind uh, the Loud and Dad project. So that's how I came to uh, meet and work with Aaliyah. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, and yeah. now uh, you guys have been friends since. Absolutely. Yeah. And awesome. she, I mean, she does an amazing job here with Aliman and with her, just the different things that she's involved with, with Loudoun County. She's, she has such good outreach and such good, um, I don't know, I always feel like she has such a good heart for service and serving others. Yes. And, so, yes. and that comes through in her work. Sounds about right. That is yeah. Aaliyah right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, it is. Do you have anything up and coming with you? Like any events, anything for other realtors, maybe workshops, anything like that? No, I don't I don't really get into a bunch of workshops that I host for, for other realtors. Um, for our, our clients, we do several client events throughout the year uh, that are always fun because it gives us a chance to sit down and interact with our clients. Uh, and again, after doing this for so long, um, we, tend, we tend to have a really good um, showing yeah. And, and, and a good audience. And, and so we do two or three of those throughout the year. Yeah, awesome. but, but nothing coming up that I can mention specifically here. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, just wanted to see, just in yeah. case, like, sometimes people want to, like, shout it out, like, be sure you to come, so I just always yeah. make sure. Yeah, no, I appreciate anything. that. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. Yeah. And then um, what are some of the challenges right now in the market with you guys, and how are you overcoming that, or what are you doing to navigate those, yeah. those moments? Yeah, so, so great question. So... As we're sitting here, the market favors sellers. Uh, there's so very little inventory, so that is the number one challenge. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk to any real estate agent, if they're competent and they know what they're doing, they'll explain that uh, the inventory, the number of homes available for sale currently, is just so challenging for buyers. And so when you're working with buyers, there's, without boring you to tears on the different strategies that, that we can employ to help buyers be successful, um, because there's, there's quite a few of them. And so yeah. without getting into the weeds here, really just helping buyers understand the different avenues that they can take to help, number one, find those homes. Number two, how to write a winning offer package that we can present to the seller and, and what, goes in, what goes into that. And it's not always just the highest sale price. Mm -hmm. And so there's a whole host of things that we do to help buyers get that home under contract because it's super challenging right now. Yeah, yeah no super challenging. Yeah. Oh, it's and, you know, with the rates where they are, um, prices where they are, of course, affordability is an issue. Uh, and so helping buyers get past some of those concerns yeah. um, is important. And when you do a really good job for your clients, um, they understand and they trust you to, to guide them um, in a way that you would guide a family member or a friend. And so that's, a, that's what I try to do. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. that's awesome. I'm glad that there's realtors out there looking out for your best interest, you know, and also letting you know of like, hey, this is going on right now, just see, so you no, know, not like, oh yeah, everything's gonna be perfect, everything's gonna be fine, don't oh. worry. Like, it's good to let people know like, hey, 
this you, is going on. You know, you want to be transparent with people. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great word to use. So yes. when you're transparent and you tell them the good and the bad, again, that builds certain trust with clients. Um, and, and the clients will be more successful when they trust their advisor, whether that's real estate or a doctor or anybody. So, you know, just, just letting them know, here are the challenges, here's how we can overcome them. But don't stress about it. Yeah. Okay? It, doesn't, it does not need to be a stressful uh, transaction. Yes. In fact, it shouldn't be. It is naturally, but, but my, be, yeah. my, my hope is that it's not for a lot of clients. With a good realtor. <laughs> yeah. That's It'll right. help you yeah, uh, that's make right. that smooth transition yeah, that's there right. for you. That's yeah. right. And now, um, who are you outside of real estate? What do you like to do? Ah, so anything that gets me outdoors, anything that has that spending time with family, that's the number one thing. Um, if I can get paid as a professional to spend time with family, that's what I would love to do. And so, you know, real estate is great because it gives me that avenue to support my family, but really it's about my family and it's about my daughters. I've got three daughters, uh, age 19, 16, and, and almost 17. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, and they're just amazing. And so anything that, that allows me to spend time with them. And again, of course, being teenagers, they're more about spending time with their friends. And so anything that, that, that has them as my captive audience. So you know, <laughs> car rides or you know, going somewhere, road trips, yeah. uh, being on a boat we love to do. And so anything for me that has them locked into an area that they can't go to the you room. You can't leave, there's no yeah, signal. Yeah, you can't leave, right? You can't, yeah, no <laughs> signal. Your dad. <laughs> yeah, those, those are the best times. And if we can do it outdoors, even better. Aww. Yeah. And where are you guys going to, like parks? Are you going anywhere international or out of state? So we just returned from Antigua for spring break and had a great time there. Nice. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. And so, I mean, highly recommend it. Uh, and again, it's, you know, we got the, the five of us together and, you know, doing a fun thing there. So anything that gets us near water, whether it's a lake or again a beach or on a boat, you know that's that's my Paradise. happy that's my yeah. happy place. And so and again if we can do it with family even better. And so we just got back from there. You know I, again I love to hike. So any of the parks around. Yeah. The um, weather's getting nice now. Yeah, it's just a beautiful time of the year, isn't yeah, it? It's absolutely. just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And now if you could give any piece of advice to anybody who's looking to sell or buy a home. Yeah. What advice would you like to give them and why should they come to you? So, good question. Um, if you're looking to sell your home, um, work with an agent who has a lot of experience. Not all agents are the same. Um, and if you look at, you know, I've heard people say, oh, all agents are the same. And if you think of any other industry or profession, that's not true. Not all doctors are the same. Not all plumbers are the same. Correct. Not all... And landscapers are the same. You've got different skill levels and experience levels for any profession, and real estate is no different. So if you are a seller, uh, I would, the number one piece of advice I would say is talk with a really good real estate agent up front. I'm happy to interview for that role. Um, but the other thing I would say is, from a practical advice, prepare your home for sale um, in a way that helps your home show well for the market. A lot of sellers might say, well, in this market of limited inventory, I don't have to do anything and my house will sell. And that is true, but it won't sell for top dollar. And if you prepare your home correctly, you're just adding money to your pocket yeah. by having a much higher sale price with your home. If you don't know what items that you should do, because not all, not all items are the same when it comes to preparing your home for sale, there are some things that you can spend a dollar and get $5 back on return. And there are some things where you'll spend a dollar and get 50 cents back on your return. So having a good understanding of how to prepare your home for sale, what projects to tackle, what should you do, what should you not do. Those are, that's a, an important conversation to have with a really good um, and experienced real estate agent. If you are a buyer, um, keep the faith. Um, the number one thing I tell buyers is don't settle. Don't settle for a home just because there's nothing else out there, right? Don't, don't have a fear of missing out in where you overpay for the wrong home. Yeah. So there are certain things to avoid uh, when you're buying a home, certain home, home, uh, certain things you just want to avoid that will hurt when it comes time for you to sell that home because eventually you'll sell that home. That might be in three years or five years or 10 years or 20 years, but at some point you're going to sell the home that you're buying. And so don't settle on your home and don't buy the wrong home just because there's nothing else out there. Yeah. Wait a little bit longer. More homes will come on the market and the right home will come on the market. And so that's an advice I try to give all buyers excuse me, and especially in a market that we're in where there's just so little inventory and yeah. buyers 
can become very anxious and they'll buy the wrong home just to get a home under contract. And they try to avoid that if you're a buyer. That is good advice. Yeah. I can see the impatience, like sometimes like, I gotta move, I gotta make that home. I don't yes. see anything else. Like I, I'm just gonna get this one. It's like, no, that's what happens. Yes. Yeah, that's what happens. Buyers like, well, there's nothing else out there. Let me buy this house. And don't do that as a home buyer. Take your time. Don't let an agent pressure you to buy the wrong home. Um, if your agent is pressuring you, then I think you should find a new agent. Okay, whether that's, doesn't need to be me, but find a good agent that will be patient with you, uh, go along uh, with you in that search, whether that's a three week long search or a three month long or sometimes six months. It's finding the right home, don't settle for the wrong home. Yes, that's great advice, thank uh, you so sure. much. Yeah. And now my final question is, um, if you could leave our listeners with any message or anything that's in your heart, what yeah. would that message be? It can be in regards to the real estate market, it could be about family, yeah. anything. So. One thing that's always on my heart is being kind and loving others. Be kind and love others. You, you don't know, we meet different people throughout the day. Um, whether it's a friend or a customer or a client or a stranger, you don't know what they're going through. And we all go through certain things. Um, as we get older, I think life has a tendency to humble us because we've run into challenges and things that we did not anticipate. And so whether it's you know, relationship issues or, you know, health issues or, you know, kid issues. You know, life tends to humble us with these different things. And so I'm a real big believer in just loving others and being kind to others. And so that would be one of the things I want to leave with anybody who's listening is just doing that, right? If, we're, if you're lucky enough to still have your parents, call your mom, call your dad. Um, my dad passed away six years ago, and I regret not calling oh, him sorry. more frequently. And he never called me either, and we had a great relationship, but he was just not a huge communicator, and I probably wasn't a huge communicator back. And so my mom is still alive, and so I make it a point now to call her more frequently, and if she happens to listen to this, she'll love what she's hearing here. And so um, you know, do things that make an impact in the lives of others um, in a positive way. And I think if, if we all um, did a better job at doing that would be just in a great place. And yes. so that's one of the things I would want to leave to anybody who's listening. Oh, I love that. It makes me feel good. That's yeah. A good message well, <laughs> to leave us with. I, I, I believe that. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for taking yeah. the time out of your day to be here and chat with us. We yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Absolutely. Yeah.